to discuss a very, very important topic and a very interesting one also. So while we are going on with all our sessions one by one for the next 12 sessions, we will be bringing up several topics, several you know, discussions in these sessions and you will be all happy that, you know, and you will be all be able to participate in that through the chat box. The question, the Q&A box is also open for any questions which we can definitely take up after the sessions. And if we are overgoing the, the, the time factor, then definitely we'll take up the questions individually. So with this, I kick off today's sessions two, where we talk about the entrepreneurial life cycle. How an entrepreneur actually starts his life as an entrepreneur and how does his life cycle goes? That's a very interesting topic actually, because we always say that you know an entrepreneur does a business if he's not able to do properly, then probably people say that, you know, he's doing a mistake about it. But actually, no businessman, no entrepreneur does a business in the wrong way deliberately. There are some steps when we go up to from the one floor to the second floor, we follow some steps. And sometimes while well, in a hurry, we miss one or two steps or we deliberately miss one or two steps because we want to reach to the top in a hurry. In those cases, there are some type of problems which comes up where we say that the entire journey of the entrepreneur goes in the reverse directions. This is only a part of the entire journey. Failure is definitely a very, very important part of an entrepreneurial journey. Before we get into the details, as usually we talk about action coach, so on the left, we see Mr. Brad Sugar, who is the owner of this world's number one business coaching firm, which is the name of Action Coach. We are having around 1,000 offices across 85 countries and coaching around 35,000 sessions every week in different countries all over the world, which includes Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, India, and everywhere. So a little bit of an action coach, what I want to say is that basically this entire entrepreneurial journey by Mr. Brad Sugar was started in Australia and now stationed in Nevada, Las Vegas. And the vision of this organization is to create world abundance through business re-education. So we don't say that we are trying to teach you business. We are saying that we are trying to teach you the other way around. We are trying to tell you what are the other ways of businesses so that it gives a different look towards it. That is the business re-education. Me, my name is Kaushik Chandra and I'm the founder and you know, CEO of this organization by the name of Ad Connect Redefining Businesses. We have got a strong team of experienced leaders out in this group which are scattered throughout the country. In the last sessions, we have already spoken about them. So we'll speak about them later. So myself was associated with different MNCs for around 32 years. And today I am a certified business and executive coach from Action Coach. We specialize in creating mastery in the entire business process, which you are trying to follow. And of course, me being a part of the great Action Coach team across the world. So our vision is also the same as Action Coach vision, that is world abundance through business education. Thank you so much for being with us today. In spite of having so many other requirements at your own end, still you have found out your time to be with us and definitely we will try to give you more within this span of 60 minutes. Thank you so much once again. So, we talk about the person called business, accidental entrepreneur, which I was talking. Now, who are these accidental entrepreneurs? I have discussed about this in my last session on 5th of February also. Because these accidental entrepreneurs are those entrepreneurs who have just come into the business thinking that I want to do great in this journey. So why do we say them as an accidental entrepreneur? We say them as an accidental entrepreneur. This is a repeat slide from the last session. 
because this needs an a prelude of the of the intercession today of the life cycle because how an entrepreneur has came into the journey whether they have decided to come in this journey or they have came by chance so these people these accidental entrepreneurs are actually those people who they are very eager to serve the people they know how to serve their clients the best way and probably they will never sacrifice customer delight at the cost of their profitability they will they are in a situations where they will leave out the profitability factor they will deny the profitability factor to to actually service the customer so what we say that they will never sacrifice customer delight at the altar of profitability the second type is basically one of the reasons are the bootstrapped so bootstrapped are the people who have raised little or no outside capital because normally a person who starts a business who conceives an idea of doing a business doing a you know getting into a journey of an entrepreneur he thinks that i have got money so i can run this business with my money and probably you know in the in the due course of time i will make that money out of that business but sometimes journey becomes longer than expected so my suggestion is that we should always try to raise a little bit of outside money from the market because that is very important actually okay the third and the most important part are those people who are self taught entrepreneurs they started on their own there are some people who take guidance from the you know seniors who might be into business or maybe seniors who are you know logically right about their business but they are not a businessman at all so they don't have a very formal business training and or education they think that it is not required it is only the money which is required to do a business but here i say you there is a correction it is not only the money which is only required for a business money is definitely important but money is the not only the subject for you know a business journey an entrepreneurial journey so it needs a basic education if you go back to our childhood we have spent a lot of years in studying right in schools in colleges acquiring degree so that we are fit to walk somewhere to get a job and earn money out of it but why it is not so in case of a business it's a very very typical question which can always burn different hurts about it because when we invest in a lot of educational background educations what we have done in our childhood from classes 1 to 10 then doing our high secondaries and then doing our college to get our degrees we have done this all because we wanted a degree to work somewhere to do a job somewhere to get the money and slowly slowly that money which we get as a, we used to get as a salary that used to take care of the investment we have which we have made around 15 years back slowly slowly so the same way it the business the entrepreneurial journey also requires a little business training and education obviously otherwise your occasional failures is the graduation process of your business you always tend to learn something by failing not by experimenting there is a difference between experiment and fail i keep on failing in my business and i start learning about the process is pretty dangerous whereas i keep on experimenting in my business and i learn the process which is very very enthusiastic and which is very very professional to be in an entrepreneurial journey with this i go ahead with a very interesting thing called where do we find these accidental entrepreneurs we are talking about them but where are they how do we find them we need to find them we need to talk to them so but actually they are everywhere but you know what happens 
it's a very sad state of affair when we say that these entrepreneurs who are actually trying to find foot in the market in the journey and then trying to become successful but no one actually serves them because they are not good in the balance sheets because every funding agencies wants a very very effective balance sheet now where do they get it from it is not possible to have a very healthy balance sheet unless and until it is made out of it okay when you start a business so we find these accidental entrepreneurs we find our friends everywhere around us who are suffering to actually excel in their journey hence i tell you uh, i give you a little bit of information about how many are they and where they are actually faltering so out of an estimate of 6.3 crore entrepreneurs in this country which has been estimated on november 26 2021 i think yeah my date is correct as of november 26 2021 india has got 6.3 crore entrepreneurs in other countries this group of entrepreneurs is actually the backbone of the economy of the country but un unfortunately in our country they are not because people does not believe them because the banking system does not believe them because they don't have a very glorious glorified balance sheet with them and there is a study which has been found out that 70% launch their businesses without any formal understanding 70% of 6.3 crores of the business people have launched their businesses without a formal business plan jaise kaam kar jaise abhi hoga this is something a point to note always 91% don't have a business degree because we think it is not important 44% of the entrepreneurs today don't even care to have an all college degree there are so many reasons not to have a college degree but actually there are very few reasons that why you want to have a college degree you need to learn the basics of the business you need to understand the basics norms of the life and then you get on to that 99.95% does didn't raise any venture capital because the idea was not there it was not known investments in a business was actually borrowing money from relatives and friends to start an entrepreneurial journey because creating a vision of a business creating a mission of a business is something which the entrepreneurs never thought of majority of the people never thought of people who have thought of they have actually raised it out 77% didn't raise any capital from outside they have put their residences they have put their home under under the bank they have put they have taken money from the friends they have taken money from the hand loans from the different organizations but still they have not gone to raise any capital from outside you know why it is not that because they don't want to do it it is because they don't know how to do it and they didn't find anybody who can help them to do it that's the whole problem so in this process what happens 96% of them become the employee of their own business they actually land up doing everything inside their business then what's the point of becoming an entrepreneur what's the point of becoming a business why did i conceive the idea of becoming a businessman when i am doing everything in my organization so hence i become an employee this is one thought which actually swells around the entire business community there are some components of our thought process which actually makes us the employee of our own business we'll discuss about this once we get into that area sad yes it's very sad but it is true that 
that 84% of the entire business group are suffering from a typical syndrome called imposter syndrome. That's why I started this session with a very sad note that, you know, it is, we are entrepreneurs, but we actually don't know what we are meant to do. This is a figure which came out from a big person, from a very, very elevated person in the society and in the, in the coaching fraternity all over the world. And uh, they came out with a fact and they come to understand that 84% of the entrepreneurs actually suffer from imposter syndrome. Now, if we don't know what is an imposter syndrome, I can help you on that. An imposter syndrome is nothing but an imposter phenomenon, which is basically a psychological pattern. It's basically a psychological pattern in which an entrepreneur, you know, gets into a sense of continuous disbelief on our own selves. They try to disbelieve their skills. They try to disbelieve their talents or accomplishments. They think that I am not fit for this business and slowly, slowly, they try to die out. That is the imposter syndrome. Hence, if I go back to the previous slide, we will find that 70% of the entrepreneurs has actually launched their business without a formal business plan. And then they have not even raised a capital for them because they couldn't plan it. And ultimately they kept on being an employee of their own business. Hence that landed them into the system of imposter syndrome. So this is really sad, but yes, it can be corrected. Hence we at Ad Connect, our mission is to help these accidental entrepreneurs to scale themselves so that they can scale their companies. Because it is important that we must scale an organization, but it is also important that we have to scale the mindset of the owner of the organization, because that's the head. We talk about a word, we now very commonly use a word called bottleneck. You know, the bottleneck is always at the top of the bottle. That actually stops the flow, that actually controls the flow of information. So we have to remove that bottleneck. We have to help those accidental entrepreneurs to scale themselves up so that they can scale their companies. Otherwise, we cannot. If the mission is not set for them, then they are not able to do that. So we were thinking about five steps to the scalable impact. Number one to understand, to agree, and to realize that the game has changed. What it was before, it is not today. The way we thought yesterday, we cannot think it today. The long two years and two and a half years pandemic period has really changed the game. And we need to recognize it. We need to accept it that the game has changed. The second step, you need to transform your top line sales into bottom line profit. There is no reason of running against a balloon, which is not going to be in your hand after some time. Running after top line sales was a vision before the pandemic where people used to run for turnovers, the top line sales. But now it is time to transform that top line sales into bottom line profits. It's a small saying, you know, I just recollected that word from Mr. Brad Sugar. He says, sales, if you want, you can just take it on. He says, sales is vanity. Profit is sanity. Whereas cash is the reality. That's the change which has happened in the business platform before from the previous period. Step number four is to make the things simple because complexity is actually the enemy of a scale. 
the more complex you make your system inside the organization, the more the scaling up gets stalled. So make it simple so that the people can understand what is required. If you are appointing people to do sales, rather make them understand that they are only supposed to do sales. Don't put up all things into the one basket and therefore the basket gets, you know, it doesn't work actually. So whenever we talk about sales, when we, whenever we talk about an HR part of the organization, when we talk about, you know, uh, uh, administration part of the organization, in a lot of cases, we try to mix up them. I know a few organizations which I've been interacting with. You know, they are big organizations. They are 17 years, 18 years, 22 year organizations. One of them I know in Baroda itself, who says that, you know, I have got a strong accounts team who also takes care of the after sales activity of the of my clients. So I ask them, then who brings the sales? Come on, Goshi, I bring in the sale. So you are running your organizations only on one pillar. That is the owner of the organization who tries to bring in sales. And the person sitting in accounts doing a double job of taking care of the customers as well as taking care of the accounts. It doesn't work. It really doesn't work. Yes, there can be an argument on this. There can be an argument on this that it can work. It can work if you want to leave the company, if you want to keep the company at the small stage where it has begun. If you really want to enlarge your vision about your organization, about your thought process, it doesn't work. Hence, we at Ad Connect help people to simplify their systems and avoid complexity so that the business can run into a commercial profitable enterprise without the owner's day-to-day -day interventions. The fifth one, the most important one is, you need to adapt the habit of scaling. If you really want to ask big, if you really want to grow big, you need to adapt the habit of scaling. You have to scale up. So there are various stages where you know, the business keeps on running one sector to another sector, where we have discussed in the last seminar also, and in the last webinar also, I'm so sorry, and uh, we have discussed this diagram actually where we started this business. We say that, oh, yes, we have become a businessman. And then we say that after some time when we are not able to find a way through it, we say that, oh, my God. It's not happening what I thought. So then when you keep, you know, pressing your acceleration into the business with a lot of strength, you actually try to, un you actually understand that, okay, wait, 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 man, something is going to happen. We might have something in this business. It was not all wrong because we need to understand that just starting a business doesn't ensure that the child starts walking. He is just born. You have to treat him. You have to give him the maximum care and, and slowly, slowly take him onto the particular level where you want to take him there. So, if we start a business, we try to push the pedal, the accelerator, and then we understand that there is something happening inside. We have to wait, we have to be cautious, and then take it forward. And then you have the feeling that, yes, man, it's working now. Now, when you get into the stage of feeling that, you know, it's working, there you come up to a stage where you say that, yes, this is the time to scale. And we are all gone and we all will be rich. That's the problem. The moment we think that we are growing and when we start scaling up, we try to become rich immediately. So we start making some unwanted mistakes, hurriedness, and obviously which lands up into a little bit of slowing down the process. You know, something develops inside our own system, which actually makes us mentally rich 
So we start ignoring some small, small things. But believe me, the small, small things also adds up to big things also. And when you suddenly start feeling that it was all going well, and when we try to scale up, then suddenly I don't see any growth. But the interesting part of life is whenever you change your vision, there has to be a time for stability. At one point of time, you are just growing and then you wanted to scale up. But while scaling up, you become so confident. You are talking, you are thinking only about the finance part. You're thinking only becoming a rich. So your entire thrust on the accelerator pedal loses down and you see this isn't working now. What happened? Where is that growth which we thought of, which we dreamt of? And you reach a stage where there are only two ways, either to scale up or just let it go. And of course, no entrepreneur today wants to let it go because they have already traveled quite a long distance along with their thought process, along with their aim in life, along with their ambition, along with their vision, mission, and culture. Because by this time, they have actually developed vision, mission, and the culture. My dear friends, if you have not done that, please put yourself into the structure of having a vision of your company, mission of your company, and culture of your company, which will attract good people towards you because you cannot run your business alone. You have to get good people around you with you. The second phase, the growth phase. You know, we got stuck there, the growth phase. We started momentum. The traction was there. The launching zone was there. We started growing and then we start, uh, we reached a place where it was a time to scale off. This is your growth phase. The entire system has to change. The thought process has to change because when you launch the product and when you have gone to a stage, when you have grown to a stage where it's ready, you're just on the cliff to jump for a higher vision, for a higher mission, there has to be some change in the process. What has taken you from the launching pad to the momentum pad will not take you the rest of the journey. And that's where our entrepreneurial friends makes a mistake. What we see and what we understand after the growth zone is basically the constraint zone. Believe me, in every business, the zone, these same zones are there. They have to come. There are no zones in any business where you start from the zero of your Y axis and your X axis and you reach the 100 points of your revenue axis and your time axis. It goes by time and by the revenue part. So by the time when you're growing and we're thinking of a scaling up, you actually entered into the constraint zone and you are standing somewhere where it is written, you are here. Minutely look into this, your constraint zone, because this is the most important part of your business journey, the constraint zone, which actually helps you to stand up, to restrict yourself from mistakes and to see around you what is going to happen and what is there. Hence, we are now in the constraint zone. Now, what are those constraints what we go on? While we have gone to the growth zone, we have moved from the launching zone to the growth zone. And then when we wanted to scale up, suddenly there was a constraint zone. Now, what are these constraints zone? Let us find out. When we want to grow, there are certain bit of expenses which were not calculated before. So the expenses are up. Situation says, when we try to scale up, we loosen our you know, harness towards the growth of the basic component that is sales. So the sales become flatter down. Get into a correction mode in that way. If required, change your team immediately in that way because the team which has brought you to some level will not take you to the other level. 
is a very important saying on this, what has brought to you will not take you there. It might be the process. It's not about the team because it's not about the team which they're doing. It is not about the efficiency of the team, which is not, which is not being counted. It is the process. The process needs to change. So your sales team needs to understand the change, accept it, adapt it, and follow it for the next step. Deadlines are not met. These all things happen in a constrained sales. Bank balances start shrinking the ODs, the overdrafts of the bank. Probably 80% or 85% of the people are actually using up the OD facility of the bank to touch the deadlines, to pay the vendors, to maintain their market standards. Otherwise, they become the defaulters. At the same time, when the sales become flat or down, your bank balances and your OD becomes comes to your rescue, actually. But that is, again, a very, very dangerous. Next part is we are, again, missing the deadline for everywhere. See, whenever we miss something, we are actually going out of the deadline. And unfortunately, what happens, it is the moral which goes down. So this is a very crucial period. You need somebody with you. You see, you need somebody to talk at that particular time. You need somebody to discuss and to give up and understand what is happening and what are the corrective steps to be taken to go to that next level because that is the level where people are going to see you. Till this time, people have not seen you. Till this time, it is you who have actually been in the journey. Now, when you try to scale up, then only the people come to see you. And of course, when there is a growth pattern, there are people who will come to you to help you in, in funds in other requirements. Now, what happens when you do, do not do this, we get burnt out. The most unfortunate part of the businessman is that when they don't follow the process or when they are not able to understand the process, what is happening around, they actually get burnt out. And when they're burnt out, they go back to the first part and again repeat the process. So to change this, sometimes there is always a big impact there has to be a very, very big impact around. Now, what is the result when we do, when we get into the constraints? When we get in the constraints, when the momentum gets stuck, then what happens? It gets into the death spiral. Either you go up or you go down. We start thinking about a legacy and then we become a very, very big zombie about it. We don't know what to do. So, this is what it happens when you are still in that death spiral. Deadline not meeting, OD is being issued up, doing something, you're not getting to understand what is going to happen. So, the spiral keeps on spiraling around your business, around your mindset, and put you down slowly, slowly, slowly. At this moment, you are always advised to take, to engage somebody with you who can understand where are the areas which you are not able to see. What are the thin lines which you are actually missing out? Because those are the areas where it goes down or it goes up. So within the constraint circle and you are still there, then you come to a situation where you say that, you know, this is the legacy of the entire subject. And this is where, you know, the things will change. And slowly, slowly, it goes down, down, and down. Just what you didn't want, actually. And thus, puts you into the dead zone where the business comes to a dead stop. This is one way of the journey. The other way of the journey is to make it a different one. How to go back. Okay. Because 
you start then thinking, what is happening? Well, why am I paying so many people? Maybe I should fire everyone and do it alone. I think, you know, everybody is wrong and I am the only person who is right. All these things, all these thoughts are basically the sign of the death spiral. When I think that I am the only person who is right and I am the only person who can run this business and nobody can be like me, I'm definitely into the death spiral. Hence, we need to understand this. So the best way, have a step back. The best way is to just have a step back. Sometimes when you retreat to the original momentum space in your growth zone where you are actually growing, go back to the bottom of that zone and then restart the business. It is very much restart what we call as a reboot. Sometimes we talk about rebooting the system. When, the, when your laptop, when your working system does get clogged down with a lot of you know previous you know cookies and everything inside, what you do, you when your system is not working, when your the laptop is not functioning well, so what you do, you ask for a reboot, correct? That reboot actually helps to refine the system, to remove the clutter, and to make the system clutter free. Hence, sometimes it is good to step back and then to step forward. It helps actually. So these are some details, some information which has been gathered from so many, uh, you know, I could say inputs which I got uh, throughout, you know, my journey as a business coach. And I found that this is one of the best system where a person can go round, go back and then come forward. Whenever there is a problem and whenever there is, a, you know, a, a sense of defeat, which, you know, sometimes catches us, which sometimes holds us, you should always reboot your entire thought process. When you reboot your thought process, then what happens is what you're seeing here. You actually understand where it was going wrong. Because actually, scientifically, what you're doing, you're traveling the same process with a different mind. With a fresh mind. So you are trying to rebooting the system. And definitely, when you, when you cross the constraint zone, you are actually towards the hyper growth, which breaks out. We will talk about this breakout, break in, break up, which are there in the businesses in a very detailed manner in some of the seminars, which is in the due time. It's a, a very, very interesting subject of breaking up, break in, break out, break in, break out, how this happens. That's the blue, the, the, you know, the right side zone is basically where you are now, which is talked about the scalable zone, where you actually help people to scale their business. So the death zone, pivot zone, which you've seen earlier, you went for a retreat, a reboot of your entire thought process systems, again, travel the journey, and then you find, okay, man, there I was making a mistake. Hence, I tweak it up and put it up to the hyper growth system, the scalable zone, and now I am here. This is how an entrepreneurial life cycle keeps on happening. It's a time to scale up. But the harsh truth, you know, all these things are good, you know, but the truth, it's a fact, actually. <clears throat> we all want change, but hardly we want to change. We all want clean roads in the streets of you know, our cities, but we hardly carry, carry a trash bin in our own vehicle. It's a general habit that we eat something from some wafers or something and you know, slide down the window down and put the thing out there, outside the car because my car needs to be clean. I don't know what is happening there. So we are actually all looking for change, but we don't find, we don't want to change ourselves because if we don't want to change ourselves, 
nobody can get the change for it. So in this case, it is the scaling which brings the change. When you scale up yourself from one level to the other level, you are actually bringing the change. So when you bring the change, you have to remember that almost everything that made you it during the launch and the growth, almost everything that made you great during the launch and growth is going to be become a liability at the scaling stage. I repeat this line, almost everything, I'm sorry, there is a spelling mistake in the going part. I really apologize for that. But anyway, it gets back to the subject, saying that almost everything that made you great during the launch and growth of your system, of your organization, is going to become a liability when you're trying to scale up. Hence, change is required. There is no need to feel bad that I have been traveling this journey with somebody and I have to break out from them and go in with somebody because that thing may become a liability when I'm trying to scale up. A very important line again for all of us. A company's liability, sorry, a company's ability to scale is the founder's willingness to adapt. So important. A company's ability to scale is the founder's willingness to adapt to that change. Because in 99.99%, the founder himself doesn't want to change. Then how does he want the company to change? It cannot happen actually. It becomes a utopian situation that I am thinking in this way, but I don't believe in it. And if I don't believe in it, I cannot change it. That is for sure. So that is how it happens. Why? The good companies fail. Leadership's unwillingness to adapt is the number one reason why good companies fail. Leadership's unwillingness to adapt is the number one reason why good companies fail. This is the truth about everything. And this is somehow is not being understood by a lot of people. Because the leaders, I'm talking about that bottleneck, if you remember, we talked about that bottleneck. You know, that bottleneck is not willing to adapt the change. Because he has to adapt the change before bringing in the change in the system. So the leadership's unwillingness to adapt is the first reason why good companies start failing. So my dear friends, are you willing to adapt? the change what we're talking about because we are all here because we want to bring the change in our own business style in our own thought process so if we want the change in our system if we want the change in our business style in our living style then we need to adapt that change hence my question to all of you are you willing to adapt if you're willing to adapt then of course we are there for you we at Ad Connect will help you to bring that change within your leadership and henceforth cascade it down to your team so that the entire system changes for good. With this, I end my sessions today about this entrepreneurial you know, life cycle because I thought that before we get into the different mastery levels in a business, I must really talk about the life cycle because I am one of them. When I am one of them, I really understand it. So, and believe me, like everybody, I also go through that as an entrepreneur. And then we keep on changing the ideas, the thought processes, and then try to refine it towards a better, towards a better world. So at that connect with defining businesses, we are working together with business owners on a systematic one-on-one -on -one basis to understand the business, to scale them up to the next level and achieve their outcomes gradually, organically. The key focus 
is basically strategic planning, sales team building, the growth catalyst of the organization are the sales team building. It's not the owner, not, not you as a leader, but is your sales team, the sales and marketing approach to optimize all the resources, the systems in your organizations, develop the team and bring them together, align the team with the leader. And of course, when all these things happens, one thing which definitely happens is profitability. So, because whatever we do and whatever we are trying to do and whatever we have done, it's not only one thing that was profitability. Because that profitability will only help us to achieve our personal goals as a businessman. Correct? So, thank you so much, dear friends. And uh, it was really very, very interesting to see all of you there who were there in the last and some of them are new but of course it's very interesting if you want to repeat this we are there please please let us know on our system so that we can repeat it sometime later also our next engagement is money mastery the cash flow mantra the heart the blood pumping inside the system how to get and keep the money it is not only getting the money but how to get and keep the money flowing the cash flow mantra and that is on i'm so sorry and that is on 26th of february 2021 2022 same time 11 30 hours that's also a fourth saturday and probably it will not be very difficult for you to take out that 45 minutes to 60 minutes and discuss about it thank you so much we are available at all these numbers 97696 and you can follow us at, at connect with the facebook instagram and linkedin and below is the website in the website you will find a very beautiful subject called discanalysis how to understand one's own self before i try to understand the other people because everybody wants to understand other people without knowing to understand how to know myself so that is one thing which we will definitely discuss whenever we get time in this series probably in this series we don't have that option of discussing about this but we can have a different discussions about that whenever we feel like thank you so much and with this i end this show today the session today and we are there to uh, for some time yes we have got some time. If you have got any uh, questions, let me see in the chat. Pankaji, thank you. Amod, thank you. So uh, any questions, if you have got, you can please uh, you know, put it in the Q&A. We can keep on answering your questions because uh, I would like to know how it was actually. Did you feel any connect? That is very important. Was there any connect with your own way of thought process or do you think that it was completely different from what it was? So, uh, yeah, okay. So I don't think anybody has got any questions. Probably, you know, uh, they will, you will take some time to understand it. And uh, uh, you can always put up a questions anywhere with the people who are there. And then, okay. Thank you, Shiju. Uh, uh, Shijuji. I mean, after a long time, I'm seeing you. Nice to see you. Hope you're keeping well. Everybody is well in the system. And I think today the entire country has opened up to do a fabulous business ahead. Thank you so much. With this, I end the session today. Bueno, que es muy bien y al rato.